Welcome to episode 7 of Beyond the Walls, the series where I cover current hot topics on Embark Studios games, the finals and the in-development art creators, their communities and things like easter egg discoveries. In this episode I'm going to make my predictions for what we'll see in season 4 of the finals, including what I think is a little leak of the season 4 map. I'll also give a quick update on a presentation about art creators that was made by Embark Studios parent company Nexon. And I'll share an idea that one of the other easter egg hunters put forward about the dolphin charm which brings back memories of easter eggs from Battlefield which a good number of the Embark Studios developers worked on. But let's kick things off by talking about the final season 4. Prior to the launch of season 3 of the finals I created this video with my predictions of what we might see in the new season including a couple of options for the new map. One of those was a map set in feudal Japan based on what I and other easter egg hunters in the community considered to be a bunch of in-game clues pointing to a map with that theme. I also predicted that we might see several melee weapons associated with that era added to the game and also that terminal attack would continue into season 3 and possibly as a ranked mode although I didn't predict it would be the only ranked mode and what that would mean anyway we all know that story and the community's reaction to it so given the number of clues we received that pointed to a map set in feudal Japan and that the predictions were pretty on the money can we do the same thing for the final season 4 map and is there anything else about season 4 that we might be able to predict firstly what do we already know about season Season 4. As you might have seen, there's actually been a lore video that dropped following update 3.12 and a bunch of info from the Embark team that really gives us a pretty strong guide for the direction the game will take in Season 4. Let's start with the lore video. It's only a minute long, so let's watch it first in its entirety. Skip ahead a minute if you've already seen it. An electrifying performance by the Live Wires. What a win! And now, a word from one of our sponsors. The Life Giver. The Sun always on, the source of everything that is good. But can it be trusted? Holtau's Sun Insurance will have you covered if the unimaginable happens and the light goes out. Holtau, brighter than ever. All right, we're clear. June, what's up? You seem distracted today. It's just, I heard that Marcel from corporate has shown up here. What? Marcel from Multico? You mean Merciless Marcel? The one and only. Oh boy. Well, after everything we've been through with CNS and the reboot, I'm not really surprised. Rumor has it that he had a meeting with the sponsors this morning. Things are definitely going to change around here. Again. Good. And let's hope they take CNS and its game mode out of the spotlight. Said like a true spokesperson for Ospuse. Hey, it's the best drink in the world. So obviously that Holto ad paints them as a pretty nefarious insurance company by scaremongering the idea that the sun might disappear. Then we're introduced to a new character, Marcel from Multico, or Merciless Marcel. Multico oversees the finals and the showrunners, and aside from that we know very little else about them. So Marcel's met with the sponsors and they plan to change the finals, which Scotty hopes will see the end of CNS and their Terminal Attack game mode. This of course fits well with Terminal Attack being replaced by Cash Out for the game's ranked mode for Season 4, and that was confirmed by Embark Studios community lead Oscar Lundberg during a recent live stream. I am pleased to announce, my friends, that in Season 4 of the finals, launching on 26th of September, by the way, Cash Out is back in ranked. I said it, it's out! Can I hit up? Personally I don't think Terminal Attack will leave the finals completely because it definitely has a following within the community, it will probably just be moved to being a casual game mode. We got additional info from that stream too as Oscar was joined by Carl Strandberg who is one of the geniuses behind the music for the finals which by the way if you didn't already know is available to stream on Spotify and other streaming services. Anyhow Carl said the game show is back and it's bigger than ever, it's better than ever, it's grand and they teased us with some of the season 4 music music. That's 
It absolutely has much more of a game show feel to it than the last two seasons, right? I think season two and three kind of stepped away from that, both through the game lore and just the overall feel of the game. So from these snippets alone, I think the scene is being pretty well set for what season four will probably look like. I think Embark is setting our expectations here for us to be much more immersed in the game show, the sponsors and the lore. And I would be a fan of that. I think those things are absolutely pillars of what the finals is as a game. And to be fair, they're probably a bit underdone at the moment. What could that actually mean for what we see in the game though? Well, as examples, it could mean a significant refresh of the out of game elements. We might see the sponsored aspects of World Tour becoming magnified and more pervasive right throughout the game. The contracts and circuits, which are all pretty clinical at the moment, could become more aligned with particular sponsors. The VRs, which are really kind of meaningless right now, could be overhauled completely so they tie in better to some sort of game show element. The career and battle pass levels and rewards right across the board all might see an overhaul to become more aligned with the sponsors. Whatever these changes are, I'd like to hope that they're significant enough that we are left going, oh Carl was right, the game show really is back and much bigger than before. So that's where I think the game is heading overall going into season four, but what about the map and new weapons and so on? Up until that lore video came out, there had been a conspicuous lack of clues that might point to a specific theme for the season four map. I'll come back to that video in a moment. Embark don't seem to have been actively providing hints for the map like they did for the Kyoto map. And I think given the game show aspects seemingly coming back to the forefront, this might actually tell us something about the map too. In other words, maybe we can work out what sort of map it might be in a more roundabout way based on what's come before and also the phase the game is currently in from a development point of view. Or perhaps a better way to describe that is what type of map does the game need alongside the changes I mentioned we might expect for season four. Related to that, I was kind of pleased to see content creator Thixie go down a similar path here with his thoughts about what season four will look like. By the way, in case you missed it, Thixie will be joining the Embark team as a co-host for TwitchCon in San Diego on the 20th for the launch of season four. And I'm sure he'll do an amazing job. It's awesome to see him given that opportunity. It's well-deserved and I consider him to be the number one content creator for the final since its launch for the quality and regularity of content he's published. Anyhow, I've linked his recent video in the description, but he talked about how he wants to feel like we're playing the finals again, as in us feeling like we're really part of the game show, which I've already talked about. And he also suggested we'll get a fantasy type of map, maybe like Skyway Stadium or Cicerizen, because Embark have sort of been doing a back and forth between fantasy and real world locations. I think he's right, and I think I have a map tease image to back that theory up, which I'll come to shortly, although I don't necessarily think the reason for a fantasy map is a particular order that Embark might be working in, but more about what type of map will fit best for bringing game show aspects to the forefront. Let's do a quick recap of the game's maps so far. The Closed Alpha had Monaco 2014, an historical urban area set in modern times. The Closed Beaters added Seoul 2023, a modern city map. The Open Beta introduced Skyway Stadium, which instead of being based on a real world location, used dioramas of architecture from the existing Monaco and Seoul maps combined to produce an area that felt much more virtual. Season 1 added Las Vegas 2032, a modern map set in the famous Nevada gambling town. Season 2 saw a lore based map in the glitchy, colourful cityscape of Cicerizen that was introduced by the rogue hacking collective CNS. And Season 3 from a lore point of view was a reset of the finals AI system with it taking us back to 1568 in feudal Japan with the Kyoto map which also saw a suite of period piece melee weapons introduced. But Season 3 also brought with it a largely dissatisfied community, especially ranked players, who were disappointed about cash out being removed from ranked play and replaced with terminal attack, and also mixed responses to so many melee weapons being added without any new guns. So I think Season's 4 absolute number one task, regardless of what or where the map is, is really to get the gameplay modes and overall feel of the game back on track, with cash out being brought back to ranked and making the game a more game show like experience. Aligned with those needs, whatever map is brought into the game for season four, it really needs to have playability and fun as its number one priority over anything else, over being an iconic location and over any lore related elements. Additionally, the map should probably have a modern or futuristic era attached to it. So having some new guns makes sense from a time period point of view. Let this sink in for a moment. 
By the time Season 4 starts on September 26th, it will have been 196 days since a new gun was introduced to the finals. That's over half a year and an extraordinary length of time without a single new gun being added to any FPS game, regardless of the reasons. And of course, some new guns will start to balance out the number of non-gun weapons added in Season 3. Let me know in the comments what guns you'd actually like to see for Season 4. I really don't know what to expect from a gadgets and specialisation point of view in some ways less might be more here because new specializations and gadgets always bring with them some level of balancing adjustments and perhaps the game would actually benefit more from not having to go through that phase so much this coming season but maybe a few gadgets that focus on destruction or traversal rather than on damaging opponents might be cool anyhow getting back to the map i think the best way to ensure that we get that high playability will probably be to have the map constructed like skyway stadium or cis horizon we're embarked doesn't need to worry as much about placing buildings based on any real world context like we see with Monaco, Las Vegas or Kyoto, the freedom to create the play area without any constraints that might negatively impact our fun and the flow of play could allow the season 4 map to simply be fun to play without taking any focus away from the game show. From a lore point of view, I think it's probably too early in the story for CNS to come roaring back strongly into the game. That might work better in season 6, 7 or 8. But I don't think it would land well if it happened after only a one season stand down. So I'm thinking all these things and the lack of clear clues for a specific location possibly point to a gameplay focused constructed arena being most likely. But of course that also opens wide the possibilities of what we might see. It could be like nothing we've seen before or a complete blend of everything we've seen so far or anything in between. I think we might have been given a single tease of the new map in that recent lore video. The majority of the second half of that video is made up of fragmentary images, a lot of which are from the season 3 trailer or existing maps, especially the Kyoto map. But at the 55 second mark we get a single image of part of a map we haven't seen before which appears to show a top down view image of a fixed circular jump pad with a large red or pink painted circle around it. And then beyond is what looks like a rectangular set of multiple tiered balconies, at least two of which might have the Isult blue colouring to them. We've seen a top down view of a map for a tease before when we got a view of the library building on the Cis Horizon map before the launch of season 2. The corners here seem to be curved which is a bit reminiscent of the modern curved balconies seen in Petronelle Plaza on the Seoul map. So we might see a modern map with decent verticality and largish buildings. I think that could really fulfil the role of a gameplay focused arena that I'm suggesting would work best for a season that's probably going to be all about bringing back the game show to us. I don't think the old maps will be forgotten though and just a few days ago Rob Runison leaked this 20 second video of an autumn or fall variant of Kyoto which looks stunning. So these are my key predictions for Season 4, lots of changes to the out of game aspects to make it feel more like a game show, with the sponsors and lore in general being much more prominent throughout the entire game. Please immerse us net deep in that game show embark. A modern map whose main focus is playability and fun and maybe not in an iconic location because we've not seen any real clues for that, and definitely some new guns. Are these the things you'd like to see from Season 4? I think if all those things are done well, it could move the finals into a pretty good position and also set and embark up nicely for bringing us some new casual modes. But maybe that will happen more in Season 5 rather than Season 4. I don't want to set our expectations too high, even if I do like the idea of what I've previously described as a new flagship casual mode being added to the game at some point. Okay, that's my predictions for the final Season 4. Let's now move on to a small update about Ark Raiders. Embark Studios parent company Nexon held what they call a capital markets update, which was quite a long presentation about where they're heading on many fronts. Part of that included a presentation by Sven Grundberg, who is Director of Communications and Brand at Embark. I've included a link to the presentation document in the video description. A lot of the info that Sven talked about was really a repeat of that from the pre-Gamescom press event, which I previously created a video about. But there were some images in the presentation which will be new to you. I'd seen most of them in the pre-Gamescom event, but we couldn't provide those for you. So 
so luckily I now can. In this image we see a zip line which was briefly talked about in a non-confirmation kind of way during the pre-Gamescom event and the caption talks about a rich sandbox of gadgets so I'd say we can probably assume that these are going to be in the game. I like how it has a backyard workshop look to the way it's been made rather than the slick styling that zip lines in the finals have. I think that will help to keep a device like this pretty grounded in an extraction shooter. Here's an image of a probe deployed by Ark from orbit that we can apparently disrupt as a quest, I assume by disabling them once they're on the ground. Quite a cool environmental image here showing that there's quite a mix of terrain, foliage and buildings in some locations. Really nice close up of one of the medium sized ground based Ark machines. The player here looks like they're opening a hatch while their teammate makes sure that they don't face any nasty surprises and the caption suggests that this could be what one of the extraction points looks like. Although we also know that players can extract via a subway system so we probably have a variety of extraction location types to choose from. Then one of our first images of your chambers or your home back at base. You'll be able to build, upgrade, improve and expand your chambers although it's not clear if you can walk around in these which would be cool or if they just sort of appear as part of the menu system. Then we get this image of the Raiders colony. This looks like concept art to me so I'm hesitant to say this is what the main base will look like. It could still be just kind of a series of menus rather than a massive base that you can actually run around in with everyone who's on your server. I think given that players will see this image and might then assume the main base is a sort of open world type of area it would be really good if Embark let us know exactly what we're going to get here probably before the playtest in late October gets underway. I'd love it if it was a massive open base to move around in though. And this is an image I hadn't seen before until this presentation. It accompanies a page that talks about the world expanding and evolving over time. This environment looks like it's based on Embark's trip to Iceland and we haven't seen anything like this in a game image until now. So this could be part of a DLC after launch. It looks like a pretty challenging mountain environment. And just a reminder that public playtesting for Arc Raiders on Steam will start on October 24. Sign up on Steam if you want to get a chance to take part in that. I'll be making regular updates about all of that as we get closer to the playtest. Lastly, if you saw my last video, you'll know that this awesome dolphin charm was unlocked by the Easter egg hunters in the community to be free for all players. Check out my video on that if you haven't claimed it yet. Anyhow, following it being unlocked, Easter egg hunter Blip Ghost made an interesting suggestion about the charm, which I reckon we should all keep a lookout for, which is that because the charm is free to everyone, it could actually be used for another follow-up Easter egg where the charm might get a affected by something in game and maybe direct us to the next stage of a chain of easter eggs. This would be a classic battlefield easter egg type of move from the Embark easter egg creators if it does do something like this. So let us know if you spot any strange behaviours from the charm, it could be a porpoise with a purpose. Thanks for watching this video to the end and thank you to the members of my channel for their ongoing support, it is greatly appreciated. Do the usual YouTube business if you want to see more videos from me from now on, give a like or comment as you see fit and enjoy the rest of your day. Kia kaha, stay strong. Everybody knows the world ain't right Down on your knees Get up and fight